There was a time not so long ago that the patrol carbine was a specialist tool used only by police officers who were already gun guys. Because of this, there weren't always policies put in place on how those guns were carried. And so the concept of cruiser ready for a patrol carbine isn't universal across the board. When policies did start coming into effect a couple of years ago with new emerging threats that required more police officers be armed with patrol carbines than the ones who were already gun guys and were already bugging the administration to carry these firearms, we started to see issuance of policies and not all of them made complete sense. If you're in a circumstance where you're in a position to advise on writing policy, to write policy, or if there is no policy at your agency about how you carry your patrol carbine at Cruiser Ready, there's some things that you should probably take into account, and we're going to go over those today. All right, man, take a seat. Look, look. Ordinarily, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending, and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I... First, we need to look at how these rifles actually operate so we can understand what condition and what level of condition we want to actually carry it in. So, on an AR-15 magazine, it's inserted into the magazine. Well... And that's what feeds ammunition up into the upper part of the gun. It works a lot like the handguns most people are used to. And this is the chamber area of the rifle. As you can see inside, there's nothing in the chamber. Unlike traditional shotguns that most people are familiar with that have a cross bolt safety, the safety on your normal patrol carbine in AR-15 like this is integral to the trigger pack. So the safety only works when the hammer's back. This causes a problem with some policies that require that the gun be carried magazine full, hammer down on an empty chamber, and the safety on. The safety can't be on when the hammer is forward. So let's take a look inside and I'll show you exactly why. Here we see the insides, the guts of the rifle. Rifle's on safe. And the hammer can't fall. Put the rifle to fire, and the hammer can fall. And this is the position that most policies with shotguns would want the hammer to be in. They want the hammer forward on an empty chamber. But now, we can't put the gun on safe. It won't go. When it comes to what condition we keep our patrol carbine in, we have to think about the total number of people, everybody who might come in contact with that rifle when we're not there. We might know what condition it's in, and we might be trained in using it, but that doesn't mean that everyone who might have to take that rifle away from the car is going to be trained in using it or knows how to use it. There's a lot of situations where someone may have to take the car for service. The car might be broke down and end up getting towed to a yard, and the rifle forgotten about. If we have some sort of medical emergency and have to go to the hospital, someone else might end up having to take that car back to the station, or, heaven forbid, we're in a really bad accident, and that rifle gets dislodged from the rifle rack, which has happened before, or the car gets so mangled that the rifle actually gets broken and stuck inside the car and it has to go to a yard with the rifle still in place until someone can come out and collect it. In situations like that, a little bit of preparation helps us a whole lot down the road. We want to set the rifle up in a way where no matter what happens, it's really, really unlikely that it's going to go off either A, because of damage to it, or B, because of mishandling. So what does this have to do with the price of rice in China? Well, it's simple. We have to make a choice between carrying the rifle with the hammer down on an empty chamber or with the hammer cocked and safe. Which one's right for you is going to depend on what you think the relative risks and rewards are. I can't tell you what those relative risks are for you in your circumstances, but I can tell you the way I do it and make some general suggestions. So when we break down our option, there's three basic ways that you can carry an AR-15, or any patrol rifle really, that uses a similar action type, i.e. not a cross-bolt safety. The first is like a 1911. When you put this into the rifle rack, you load your magazine in, you charge the gun, make sure there isn't back around in it, smack the forward assist, close the dust cover up, and have the safety on. In this configuration, the advantage is that when you pull the gun out of the rack, it's ready to go. It's cocked and locked, and you don't have to do anything with it. You can throw the sling over your head, 
shoulder the rifle, and all you have to do is flip it off a safe in order to start sending rounds down range. The disadvantage of this is that, just like we talked about with what happens if we get into an accident, what happens if we're not the one that is dealing with the rifle, what if someone else has to take it out of the car, now we've got a cocked and locked gun in a rifle rack. What happens if it falls out of the rifle rack? What happens if the safety gets bumped off and when we're pulling it from the rifle rack, because as we all know, those rifle racks can get very sticky, especially in hot cars in the summer or in very cold cars in the winter, those rifle racks can lock up on us and we're yanking to get the rifle out, we accidentally hit the trigger. Negligent on our part? Yeah, but it's two layers of negligence. One is that our hand was anywhere near the trigger, and two was that we had a cocked and locked rifle in the rack and we weren't taking that into account when we were handling it. If the rifle's not cocked and locked in the rack, then we don't have the same problems with accidentally hitting the trigger because somehow the safety got bumped off. And if you've been inside of a squad car for any amount of time, you know stuff gets sloshed around, you got multiple people coming through the car, it's real easy for the safety to get knocked off. Now our second option is to carry the gun in the rack or in the trunk with the chamber empty, the bolt locked all the way to the rear, and the magazines or magazine out. And in this configuration, to get the gun ready to go, we simply lock the mags in or the mag in and hit the bolt release. And this gets our gun ready. So we can have the gun with the hammer back and the safety on already. And then when we put the mags in and hit the bolt release, we're ready to go. The advantage to this is that our safety stays on regardless of whether the gun's loaded or not. We just happen to have the hammer back. We have the extra added assurance of knowing, just at looking at it, that the gun's loaded, the safety can't be popped off, and the gun's gonna go off. The disadvantage of this is that you've got two separate things, the magazines and the rifle that have to come together. Another disadvantage of it is that this bolt, when it's locked back, is very easy to get bumped. And then your bolt's closed on an empty chamber. Now when you go to pop your magazines in and hit the bolt release, nothing happens, so you have to go to the charging handle. So you're fumbling with the gun. The third system, and the one that I prefer, is to have the gun with the hammer cocked back and the safety on. We assure that we have an empty chamber. And we load a full magazine in. This is as close to the traditional cruiser ready as I think that we can get, like we used to have with shotguns. In this configuration, your advantage is that you very quickly have the gun ready in operation. All you have to do is pull it out of the rack, or pull it out of the trunk, and charge it to get around into the chamber. The disadvantage of this is that we have to make sure that we absolutely know what we're doing with the rifle. But if you're carrying one of these around, you should know what you're doing with it. You don't want to draw the bolt back and then let it slowly slide forward. Realistically, if this is a problem for you, you probably shouldn't be carrying a rifle around anyway. Now the advantage is, once we charge the gun, it's ready to go just like we had it cocked and locked. So we pull this out of the rack, we charge it, the rifle's already on safe, full chamber, full magazine, we're ready to go. And we can do this as we're exiting the car and not lose a whole lot of time. Now here's something I'd like to point out, just a little added tidbit. These guns might be drop safe, but that doesn't mean that the firing pin isn't gonna strike the round when we charge them. Every time we charge one of these guns, the firing pin strikes the back of the round. You can see the other two rounds that I ejected while doing this. Both of them have firing pin, light firing pin strikes. So this adds another dimension to it. If every time we charge this gun, we get a light firing pin strike, do we want to keep charging this gun all the time? Every day when we take it in and out of the armory, let's say, do we want to be charging around into the chamber, taking that round out, and then recharging it the next day, taking that round out, recharging it the next day? You hit these primers enough with these light strikes, they might not go off. In fact, they're not going to. They're not going to go off with these light strikes unless there's something physically wrong with the gun. But eventually you're going to break loose all of the material that's inside, and the thing's not going to go off when you want it to go off. Most mechanical devices these days are hinged toward the side of safety. And we have to be careful because that safety is toward the side of the gun not going off and not the gun actually going off when we want it to. So when it comes down to it, the decision is yours. Your big boys and girls, you can make
make the decision on your own. I know what I'm gonna do. Whatever you do, make sure you stay safe. Don't forget to check out our Patreon. It's what makes all of this go. Thank you to the Patreon supporters who have contributed so far. Your contributions have helped me travel to get better backdrops for these new upcoming videos and to get some other equipment that I wouldn't otherwise have in order to make these vids. You guys be safe, and we'll see you next week. Well, if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, go 10-8. County 291. 291.